Until now, we were looking at the dynamics of a system by using the Lagrangian formulation. So, we constructed Lagrangian using the generalized coordinates, generalized velocities and time and from there we constructed our equation of motion. Now, we would like to change the description from generalized velocity to a generalized momentum which we defined earlier as uh, pj the generalized momentum for jth generalized coordinate to be the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to jth generalized velocity. Uh, this quantity pj it's a generalized momentum and also we often uh, call it as canonical momentum. So when we make such a change from q q dot and t to q p and t what we do is essentially we move from a dimensional configuration space where the dynamics of the system is described by n second order differential equations from there we move to basically a fetch space which is 2n dimensional. So we still have n generalized coordinates to that we are adding n generalized momenta. So we have now we will see that we will have 2n first order differential equations instead of n second order differential equation. For example I mean what we mean by moving from second order description to a first order description is something like this. Consider this equation second derivative of x is equal to minus omega square x. Uh, this is completely equivalent to writing x dot equal to omega v and then v dot equal to minus omega x. You see uh, the symmetry in this definition x depends on v, v depends on x and um, also they are both first order differential equation uh, combined together if we eliminate v we get back this equation again. Now if we have a second order differential equation to completely solve it we need two initial condition we need the values of x at a particular time and x dot at a particular time. Uh, that scenario is, has not changed even in this case when you have uh, two first order differential equation you still need initial condition you still need to know for an exact solution the value of x at a particular time and value of v at a particular time. So although the description has changed but our uh, you know the inherent information that we need uh, to an initial condition that part has not changed. But then what is the what is the advantage of uh, you know uh, moving from q to p. The advantage uh, is uh, it's manifold I mean first of all dealing with first order differential equations uh, mathematically simpler number one. Second is a uh, the implication is much more profound. In the configuration case, a uh, configuration space, I mean we had generalized coordinate, generalized velocity and time. Now before we solve the equation for a, a if we look at a given Lagrangian, then for a particular value of q, we do not have any restriction on what value uh, q dot takes. So that means that in a Lagrangian q and q dot are independent quantities. From the Lagrangian alone we cannot infer that what should be the range of values or restriction of uh, values of q dot uh, from I mean whether it has any dependence on q. It does not. I mean they are independent coordinates. I mean although we write q dot to be the derivative of q total derivative but 
Indila Gandhi and this their status is like independent coordinates because you know having a specific form of Q does not impose any restriction on the values of Q dot. So as such once we understand that generalized velocities are not restricted then we could have chosen that to be an independent coordinate. Uh, this is what precisely we are doing. Instead of using the generalized velocity, we are using the generalized momentum and we give this generalized momentum uh, the status of a uh, coordinate. So, I mean, I should not say coordinate. These are, these become independent variable. In fact, so much so, we will see later that it will probably be not correct to define uh, generalized coordinate and generalized momentum. The Q and P uh, would be just independent variable. In fact, uh, defined in, in a different way, P might be a coordinate and Q might be a momentum. It's possible. You see, the symbols does not uh, carry any special meaning in this sense. I mean, after we move to the, you know, phase space in the QP description. Now, when we make this change from configuration to phase space, from the Q's and Q dots to the Q's and P's, we similarly introduce the change in the function that we were dealing with we will not deal with uh, Lagrangian anymore. We will deal with uh, Hamiltonian. Hamiltonian would be an equivalent function which gives us, uh, you know, this uh, two and first order differential equations and it would be functions of Q's and P's. Uh, in the following, we will see, I mean, apart from advant, I mean, first we'll see what are the advantages of using the Hamiltonian formalism. Some of the advantages of using the Hamiltonian formalism apart from the simplicity which we mentioned before. We can use the Hamiltonian, we, we use the Hamiltonian in quantum mechanics and in statistical mechanics. So that way we are introducing a concept now in the classical mechanics which will help us in making connections between the classical mechanics and quantum mechanics and statistical mechanics. So in general, you can say the Hamiltonian is a, a much more natural description in the sense that Hamiltonian, uh, particularly uh, as we have seen before, I mean, we will see later that Hamiltonian is essentially one can connect that to energy, particularly for spheronomic systems. Now for such system, uh, Hamiltonian could be shown to be like in quantum mechanics the generator of time in the sense that a time translation requires uh, or governed by the Hamiltonian. So as such this is one of the fundamental quantity in physics which governs the time evolution of an object. This is more apparent in quantum mechanics but in classical mechanics we will see the Hamilton's equation gives us the a similar description. One more advantage of Hamiltonian formalism is it gives us a, some mechanical way of solving equations of motion. Earlier we have seen one advantage of Lagrangian formulation was uh, to deal with the constraints in a mechanical way. We do not have to intuitively guess the you know the forces of constraint but Given the equation of constraint, we can get the forces of constraint. So that way, kind of that intuition was taken over by a mechanical method. Now, uh, we have equation of motion, but solving this equation of motion is not yet easy. Uh, particularly, you know, this uh, in number of second order differential equations. So what we plan to do is to rewrite the equations in such a way that solving them becomes much simpler. And this is where we will see the Hamiltonian gives us enormous advantage. Also, I mean, uh, it does that actually by 
uh, constructing, helping us construct the integrals of motion. If we identify that which quantities do not change, then uh, with respect to those quantities, we can analyze the motion. That gives us a certain uh, simplicity. Uh, for example, in a planetary motion, uh, the planets move in a plane about the star. It comes from the conservation of angular momentum and where uh, angular momentum <coughs> is basically an integral of motion. So you see, having uh, identification of an integral of motion, angular momentum for example, uh, in case of planetary motion, it naturally leads to uh, certain laws like uh, Kepler's area law and other similar structure without solving the equation of motion. Moreover, the Hamiltonian description also gives us a structure called Poinsot brackets, which are very similar to the commutator in quantum mechanics and both give us uh, an easy way of uh, finding out how a particular dynamical quantity, meaning a mixture of, uh, it could be a mixture of dynamical quantities, say for example, it could be square of the momentum, it could be product of two momentum, it could be product of two momentum divided by uh, square of the position. Such a dynamical quantity, how does it change with time? Poisson bracket tells us how to calculate such things easily. So these are basically uh, the major motivation for moving to the Hamiltonian description.